Dusty is named after Dusty Baker, the manager of the Washington Nationals, a team that of course uses the ballpark of the Palm Beaches as their spring training facility. But the name of this turtle wasn't the only thing that was unique about the day. The actual release was a little unique. That's coming straight from Loggerhead Marine Life Center officials. They're telling me this is very unique. As you can see here, even though it's an incredibly hot day outside, it seemed like Dusty just didn't want to make it into the ocean. In fact, volunteers had to reposition him about three times before he finally swam away. Looked like he didn't want to leave for some reason, you know, he's had it pretty easy for a while, so uh, going to have to work for a living again now, but uh, he, he finally did decide to leave. Dusty was str found stranded in St. Lucie County back in February of this year, and we're told that Dusty Baker did actually come by and uh, visit him. He, of course, was not here, unfortunately, at the release today. But even though the turtle is not fully matured, it's still a pretty big boy. He weighed in at 100 pounds, two and a half feet long. Reporting live in Juno Beach, Sonica Donge, WPBF 25 News. Yeah, you can't blame him for not wanting to leave, Sonica. Those are some great people at Loggerhead. Thank you, Sonny. Well, still to come this noon, find out how officers in St. Lucie County are working to get guns off the streets. Plus, alarming new numbers show parents are unaware that their teenagers are not getting properly vaccinated and the impact of a potential tax rate hike on people living in parts of the Treasure Coast. You're watching WPBF 25 News at noon. Taking guns off the streets in St. Lucie County, the Sheriff's Office says Sheriff Detectives and members of the ATF set up an undercover buy of an illegal short barreled AR-15 style rifle. The gun was listed for sale online. Peter Turco was arrested and charged with possession of that machine gun. He was booked into the St. Lucie County Jail on a $15,000 bond. And St. Lucie County has their eye on a property tax rate hike in the near future. County records say the proposed 8.9% increase would generate about $25 million in extra revenue. Under the budget proposal for homeowners, a $200,000 home means just over a $200 increase and a $90 increase in the city. There will be two public hearings about this in September. We'll keep you posted on when those meetings happen. And a huge reduction in student loan debt. Why $5 billion in student loans could soon be thrown out. We'll explain that. Plus, focusing on the fruit. Three tips experts have to work more fruit into your diet. You're watching WPBF 25 News at noon. This noon, relatives in Minnesota are demanding answers in the fatal police shooting of a woman who called 911 to report an alleged sexual assault in an alley near her home. Don Damon was supposed to marry his fiance Justine next month. It is difficult to fathom how to go forward without her. Instead, in today, life. he and Justine's family are left questioning why police would shoot and kill his future bride and their daughter after she called 911 for help. We only ask that the light of justice shine down on the circumstances of her death. It was Saturday night at 1128. Justine calls the police to report a possible assault in the alley behind her home. Female screaming behind the building. Just four minutes later, officers on the scene report they had opened fire. 530, I'm 30 feet here. There was no dash cam video of the incident, and both officers' body cams were turned off. Now, independent investigators are working the case. I have the same questions everybody has. What happened? The Minneapolis Star Tribune says Damon came out in her pajamas, approached the police SUV in the alley about 100 feet behind her house, standing by the driver's side. The officer in the passenger seat reportedly opened fire through the driver's side door shooting her two to three times. Sources close to the investigation tell ABC News' Minneapolis affiliate KSTP. The officer who fired identified as Mohammed Noor, a 31-year-old two-year veteran of the force. City records show he's had three complaints filed against him. Two are still open. Investigators say no weapons were found at the scene other than the officer's gun. Officer Noor's attorney released a statement saying the Damon family is in his prayers, adding that Noor joined the police force to help the community. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, New York. Federal records show former U.S. House Speaker Dennis Hastert has been released from prison in Minnesota and transferred to a Chicago 
reentry facility. Hastert is nearing the end of a 15 month sentence that a federal judge gave him back in April of 2016. He was accused of sexually abusing teenagers while coaching wrestling at a suburban Chicago high school. Hastert pleaded guilty, seeking to pay $3.5 million to keep the sex abuse a secret. And a 10 year old South Florida boy is among Florida's youngest victims of the opioid crisis. Preliminary toxicology tests show that Alton Banks from Miami had fentanyl in his system when he collapsed and died in his home last month. Officials say fentanyl is so powerful that just a speck breathed in or absorbed through the skin can be fatal. The survivors of the September 11th terror attack face higher risk of heart and lung problems. A new study says up to 11 years of follow up. People injured that day say they were twice as likely to develop heart disease as people who did not sustain injuries. Dust and debris exposure led to a 30% increase of people developing asthma and lung diseases. Well, a major problem for physicians in rural communities, new information shows that hospitals are scaling back services, shutting down their maternity wards or closing them altogether. Since 2010, 80 hospitals have closed. Experts say to save on insurance and staffing costs, maternity departments are often among the first to get shut down inside financially stressed rural hospitals. Well, teenagers may be missing vaccines because parents don't really know that they need one. According to a new national poll, over a third of teenage parents don't know when their child's next vaccine was due. Half of parents incorrectly assumed that their doctor when the time came would initiate the appointment. More than 90% thought that their teens got all their vaccinations recommended by their teen years. Well, people who eat lots of fruit have a lower risk of chronic conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and certain cancers. And experts say most fruits are naturally low in calories, sodium, and fat. Here's some tips for working more fruit into your diet. Eat mostly whole or cut up fruit to get the fiber it contains. Buy fruit in season, that's when it's most flavorful and that's when it's the least expensive. And keep a bowl filled with your favorite fruit on a counter as a reminder. Well, scary moments for a truck driver in Georgia. Heavy rain hit Savannah, causing a large tree branch to crash down on a power line and a delivery truck. The driver was still inside that truck. Fortunately, he was not injured. City workers removed the branch and Georgia Power fixed the power line in about two hours. So they've got the severe weather up there. We've got our own storms happening. And of course, we're watching what's happening in the tropics. In the tropics, none that's not going to bother us right now. So Good. the tropics look like we don't have to worry about that. What well, we do have to worry about some scattered showers and storms, basically what we saw yesterday. We're going to do it all again today. Here's a live look at first alert Doppler radar. Again, tropical moisture. There's a lot of it out there. All we need is a little bit of that daytime heating, and that's what we're getting. And we're getting those scattered showers pop up at times into the area. Right now, live first alert Doppler radar. You can see as we go out.